Hey guys, Mr. John here. In this video I'm going to show you modifications that I did to this device, which as you can see already is a frequency counter which I bought a few years ago when I was obsessed with FM bugs. Yeah. Uh, I liked built-in simple FM bugs back then and uh, sometimes I just wasn't able to pick them up on a radio but uh, that means uh, two things the bug is not working or the bug is working at the frequency that the radio can't receive second case is actually the most often one well at least it was in my practice this thing is quite nice it is quite handy little counter but it has couple of disadvantages first disadvantage is uh, for sensitivity, you need to approach the transmitter's antenna pretty. Uh, you need to most touch the transmitter's antenna in order to for the readout to be of any use, because if this thing gets not enough signal, weak input causes a ridiculous readouts, like 100 megahertz transmitter reads 800 megahertz. Well, that can be because of the harmonics. I don't, I don't have any other tool to test it. Simple transmitters like I used to be obsessed with uh, have output rich in harmonics. I know that, but still. Second disadvantage is that it runs on 9 volt battery. And that wouldn't be so bad if the thing wouldn't consume 50 milliamps, which is quite a lot for a 9 volt battery, if you ask me. Uh, so I modified it and inside it looks now like this well inside you can see obviously a main board and where a 9 volt battery used to be and where a 9 volt, 9 volt battery used to be there is you can see a little pack which contains uh, two AAA nickel metal hydride cells and you also see this board. This board is uh, just a cheap eBay module. Uh, this one is MT3608 DC to DC step up converter, which is a very common cheap module on eBay. You won't have any trouble finding it. And yeah, the chip here is most likely in microcontroller. Well, it is a microcontroller, but You may be able to see that they rubbed the number off, but this looks suspiciously like 80 mega 8. Because 5 volts is on pin 7 and ground pin 8, so yeah, looks very, very similar to 80 mega 8, so that's what I think it is. And crystal is connected to the same pins, but that's not a topic of this video. As you can see here, I soldered three wires where another TO92 device was. And that device was 78L05. And this thing doesn't have any switch which latches the power on. It has this tactile switch, which when you press it, the thing turns on. And when you long press it, the thing switches off. You can also freeze the reading if you press it shortly. You see? It froze. So, how it does do that? Well, this is a PNP transistor, which you turn on by pressing this button, because this button pulls the base of this transistor to ground and turns it on. And there is another transistor there, NPN transistor. So that's an PNP transistor I was talking about, that's an NPN transistor I was talking about, which is connected to the logic on the board and which keeps this transistor on and thus supplies power for the scene. And when the, this scene has a timer that it can switch itself off after 30 seconds or so. So after 30 seconds the chip says, puts out zero here and this transistor turns off and thus this transistor turns off as well. So what I did 
is I took out the 78L05 and I've put this module instead of it. I've put a positive input input of the module here, positive here, negative to the ground, output, positive output of the module here. And that's that. Almost. However, I also changed one little resistor which you, unfortunately you can see here but I'm gonna include a picture where you can see the resistor that I've changed and that resistor is this one it's a base resistor because that was 10k and uh, that wasn't enough to provide enough of a base current for this transistor to turn it on very nice so I can draw 120 milliamps here because the DC to DC step up converter it takes 2.4 volts at 120 milliamps and converts it into 5 volts at 50 milliamps that's the way it is these are rough figures they're not exact but that gives you an idea so I recalculated it I replaced it with 1k and you're gonna see a picture of that resistor of the board where I use a little screwdriver the that points at that resistor. Okay, and uh, yeah, this little module was very crusty when I got it. The solder joints on it looked absolutely fabulous, and you're gonna see what I'm talking about now. Gorgeous. I ain't gonna lie, this is the crustiest joint I ever seen. Because it, that is a lead-free solder paste, which didn't reflow in the oven, and they pulled it out. Seeing that, I went and reflowed each and every junction on this board, so it's gonna be reliable. This board is, you can see, have adjust, it has adjustments, so you must um, set it to 5 volts before you put this into the thing, because this board can output up to 24 volts, and the last thing you want is to apply 24 volts into the, mi to the microcontroller, that will burn it out very well. So that's it. Little modifications that I did. Yes, I'm gonna include the charging jack, uh, jack, but I decided to make a video now because adding a jack is not a big problem. You will be able to do that on yourself, and I don't need to share it to share it with you. So that's that. Thanks for watching. See ya.